I put aerogel in my keyboard so you don't have to. Yes, that aerogel, like the NASA stuff. I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain. Howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech, and you're probably wondering why, and how expensive was it? Well, for good sounds, and dear god. Now, I'm known for filling keyboards with weird things. I've done it with sand, I've done it with pillow foam, I've done it with, uh, Play-Doh. <laughs> A little while ago, I asked you what video idea you wanted to see, and you guys voted on this one. If you want to vote on future videos, then you better hit subscribe, because I post them to my community tab. Anyways, this story begins with a $20 jar. Yeah, that little jar was $20, and a lot of vacuuming. I'll explain what aerogel is later, but essentially it's a cool little NASA material that's apparently amazing at sound dampening or something. But of course, because I need to fill a keyboard, I'll be filling the Freebird 75. And to pay for all of the aerogel that I had to buy for this video, I managed to get a sponsor, Keeps For All. Basically, they sent out these keyboards for me to check out, and uh, I'm filling them with aerogel, don't tell them. They didn't tell me anything I need to say about the keyboards, and generally my deal with keyboard sponsorships is they send me the product, they send me money, that's it. So I'll have all three of the Freebird keyboards from Keeps For All linked down below if you'd like to check them out, then go check them out. Speaking of checking out, look at that little gummy ring. We'll get into that soon. But before we get into the gummy ring and the aerogel, we've got to get into this PCB. It's got a little flex cut and it's hot swap. So that's very nice. Now the Freebird 75 is $180 and is what I call a shorter group buy, meaning they're fulfilling within a couple months. I would still prefer an in-stock keyboard any day of the week, but it's the step in the right direction. Speaking of the right direction, those were stabilizers that were included with the board. However, I did lube them myself. So that is one less thing you have to buy for 180 bucks. The board also includes foam, which we will be putting to the test later in the video against the aerogel to see if aerogel or included foam is better. I sure hope the included foam is better. Uh, otherwise that might justify spending hundreds of dollars on aerogel. Anyways, the keyboard is wrapped in this nice little tissue paper. It makes me kind of feel like it's my birthday or Christmas or something like that. And I got the E-White version of the Freebird 75. It also comes in navy, black, and objectively the best color, lilac. But, you know, we got the white version with an aluminum or aluminium plate. I'll get into this more later, but uh, don't get the aluminum plate. Get, get one of like the Palm or the FR4 or something. Just don't get aluminum. I'll explain. Anyways, your retinas might be burning because of how bright my camera is right now. I'm sorry, I, I should have made that. Okay, there we go. You're probably wondering why they call it the Freebird TKL. Um, I don't know, but here's what appears to be a goose on the keyboard. Engraved, it's quite nice. It's a very nice goose. Yeah. Now, this keyboard's also made out of 6063 aluminum or aluminium. Fight down in the comments, which is better. And I'd say the overall build quality is pretty good. It's a little bit better than something like the Keychron Q1 and a lot better than something really cheap and plastic. Granted, I would hope so if you're paying $180 for it. Also, I'm just gonna install this daughter board really fast. Uh, beep boop, there we go. I should mention, they also sent out the Freebird TKL and Freebird 60. Those are both keyboards that I would consider to be a little bit better than the Freebird 75, but I can't get into that right now. I had like a day to make this video. Now that you're familiar with the Freebird, let's uh build it, let's, let's build the Freebird and get it ready for the aerogel, of course. Now, because this is a hot swap build, there's really not that much to it, but I'll, I'll guide you through the process in case you're building one at home. For the switches, I'm gonna be using some lubed pink robins, also from Keeps For All. They sent me a care package if you can't tell, so most of the stuff will be from them. Granted, these are a factory lube linear switch, which you could get at basically any other vendor, but they're pretty good. Um, also, we're, we're getting to the aerogel soon. Don't worry, stop. These are manufactured by Alfion, and I honestly don't know if I've tried any Alfion switches before, but these did really, really impress me. Like you'll see in the sound tests, well, you'll see in one of the sound tests that these turned out to be a pretty well-rounded linear switch. I definitely prefer a really light spring, so these felt a little bit heavy to me, but that's my personal preference. And wait, what's going on here? Why can't I seem to get it in? Oh, what's, go oh no, oh no. Oh no. So the uh, plate actually arrived bent. Um, this is technically a prototype, so I'm gonna give them a pass here, but that was definitely what we call in the business a bummer. Yeah. Now, because I'm a rock climber, um, I'm really strong and I managed to fix it by, by bending it about equal amounts in the opposite direction, but it, it works now, so I guess that's... Now, in order to put the rest of the switches on, I'm gonna perform what we call magic. So if you like that magic, please leave a like and subscription right now. Otherwise my mana is running low and I'm fading rapidly. Oh God, please help. Now at this point in the build, I had a decision to make. Do I do the gummy O-ring or the top burger man? 
Now you probably have no idea what that means and I'll get into that soon, but gummy O-ring or top burger? I do like hamburger, cheeseburger, but ooh, the gummy O-ring is really tempting. Basically all you do is you just fold it around the keyboard like this and then beep boop bop, it's a gummy O-ring. Maybe I'm either dumb or it just wasn't that impressive to me. Maybe I'm dumb, I could be dumb, but I wasn't that stoked with the gummy O-ring, so I decided to go with the burger top mount. So they give you a bunch of really small O-rings and this is the way I decided to do it. I decided to put one O-ring over each of these little screw holes where the plate meets contact with the top of the PCB. And then I saved the rest of the O-rings for later, which we'll talk about in a second. If you're new to keyboards, basically what this is doing is trying to reduce some of the contact with metal on metal. But as I mentioned before, with the aluminum or aluminum plate, you, you, uh, there's just so much metal noise that's gonna happen in this keyboard that I really highly recommend you don't go with the aluminum plate. I also put little O-rings on all of the screw holes where the case meets case because I wanted to reduce case on case vibrations as well. I don't know if this was intended or not because I didn't have a build guide. I was really just winging it, but that's what I did. So if you're following along at home and you want your keyboard to sound like this, then there you go. There's the Hippio Tech patented way of building this keyboard. Maybe, unless it was the way you're supposed to build it. And that's the way you're supposed to build it, patented method of building the keyboard. Also, now that I'm looking at the keyboard actually built, this keyboard does look surprisingly good. Ignoring the seams from the O-rings, which is my doing, by the way, I do think this board has a pretty premium look. It looks like a board that you might pick up for maybe 250, 300 bucks, and it's only 180. So that's a big bing bong point, a good up, upvote or whatever. Speaking of upvote, I want your eyes to explode. So I've picked out a set of entirely white keycaps. Not entirely white, there's text on them, by the way. I wanted to give the keyboard like an aerogel vibe, but then I also didn't want to use clear keycaps because on the thumbnail, someone might not see that it's a keyboard. Is that like too, is that too YouTube meta? Okay, anyways, these are the KFA black on white keycaps. And uh, honestly, they were pretty decent. They're only 33 bucks. Not bad if you're looking for a budget set of keycaps that isn't clones. They're probably my favorite part of this whole build. They're just die sub PBT. They're relatively thick. I didn't see any real issues with them. And they sounded kind of nice. Speaking of sounding kind of nice though, that is something that this board does not do without any foam. But that can be said about most keyboards to be fair. But in a way, honestly, it makes it a really good canvas for this experiment where I'm gonna be putting aerogel in it because then I get to compare bad to potentially good to potentially gooder. And speaking of good, here are some very good boys on this little desk mat. It's a good Beach Boys desk mat. Uh, there, there you go, link down below. I should really just become Linus Tech Tips at this point with all these segues, but you know, I'm, I'm Captain Segway, look at me go. Okay, but now that the keyboard's built, I'm gonna start by showing you what it sounds like with absolutely no foam. So this is the experience that you won't even get building it because you're going to build it with the included foam, right? You're, you're gonna build it with the included foam, right? Please, please. Okay, so that ain't too great. It's incredibly hollow and you hear a lot of metal pinging sounds. Granted, if you use any plate aside from aluminum, there's gonna be a lot less of that, but let's just go ahead and install the included foam that we were supposed to install anyways. I say supposed to, but you know, I did it. I, I didn't do it, hee <laughs> hee. Some of the ping in this board is just from it being a two piece style build. Like the Freebird 60, which you're seeing on your screen right now is a tray mount, which when built out of cheaper aluminum, I feel like a tray mount will sound better than a two-piece mount that's out of cheap aluminum. But, uh, you know, take, take this with what you will. Okay, now in the background, I've gone ahead and installed the foam inside of the keyboard. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a test of what it sounded like before foam, and then I'm gonna let you listen to what it sounded like after foam. And then let me know what you think down below in the comments. So to me, that's already a massive improvement, but I think we can do better. Remember, aerogel. This, this video is about aerogel, remember? At least two of you are gonna leave a mean comment about how it took nine minutes to get to the aerogel, but okay, look, it took me nine minutes to put on these gloves. So, you know, who's laughing now? <laughs> who's, who's... So aerogel is considered the world's lightest solid, and you can watch a Veritasium video on it if you're actually more interested but it's got some amazing properties. Like it's 99.98% air by volume, which is really cool. And uh, I'm pouring it in my keyboard. Now, originally I planned to buy five or six of these containers at uh, like a hundred dollars total, but uh, uh, yeah, it, it sounds like 
glass, kind of. So after testing what it actually sounds like in a keyboard, I was sorely disappointed. Like, I felt like I just had to write this whole entire video idea off. But then, I saw something when I was looking on Amazon. Hold on, I've got it. I've got it right here. It's what we call a box. No, it's, uh, sorry, it's what's in the box. Yes, it's what's in the box. Now, Aerogel on its own is kind of a novelty, but Aerogel mixed into things is actually kind of ingenious. So I found something called Aerogel insulation padding, which to me just sounds the best. Like they literally say, look, a uh, sound dampening or whatever. It said there on that little paper. Now, generally this is used in areas that have really extreme like temperature differentials or something like that. And, uh, oh, it leaves a very, weird residue on my hands. I'm gonna put back, I'm gonna put the gloves back on. But uh, yeah, this has a weird powdery residue to it and it's kind of odd. The, my best way of describing it is it's like a felt that's like got little particles in it, but it cuts very easy. So I can just cut it to shape in my little keyboard and then we're gonna be good to go. Well, I should say it cut really easy from the side, but to cut the middle out to get the cord through was actually really hard. That's why I had to cut my camera. Now I know, I know this isn't the aerogel crystals in my keyboard, but essentially it is, it really is. It's it's broken up in this little like fibery fabric type thing. So it's full of aerogel, which gives it that unique aerogel type properties while also being a dampening material. Don't believe me, I'll compare it to the foams that come with the board in a second. Now, would I recommend doing this? No, uh, cutting this was quite miserable. I had aerogel particles all over my desk. I spent way too long vacuuming, but did it work? Oh, it worked. So essentially don't try this at home, but I mean, if you were to, it would kind of, it would kind of work, you know, but I think overall this made the Freebird 75 a pretty compelling keyboard for only $180. So, I mean, if that's the takeaway, then I guess Aerogel is kind of neat. But hey, if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll drop the couple hundred dollars and I'll fill a keyboard with the actual crystal aerogel. I'll post as a short, so get subscribed for that. It'll it'll just sound really terrible though, so I probably shouldn't do it to like a sponsor's keyboard because then they get really mad at me. But hey, if you want to see that, hit subscribe. Anyways, if you stayed till the end, here's an extra howdy hey. I'm leaving you with a sound test of no foam, with foam, and then aerogel. So leave a comment of which one you like the most down below. Bye bye.